So hi guys, I'm Pete Shursby. I'm back in the repair lab today and uh, I've got a repair for you. So this is a Spectrum Analyzer. It's an Anritsu MS611A uh, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice piece of kit, I think. It's a two gigahertz radio frequency Spectrum Analyzer. Um, but what's particularly interested is we start off at 50 hertz and that's pretty unusual and it means we can actually take this all the way down into uh, audio frequencies as well as radio frequencies. Most of the ones that I've seen start at uh, 9 kilohertz. So overall this looks like a pretty nice piece of kit. Um, its overall condition is, uh, is I think pretty good. A few labels of course, that sort of stuff, a bit, bit of yellowing on the buttons, um, but pretty pleasing. Um, so first up the pilot light uh, does come on um, but I've uh, turned the main power switch on and uh, yeah enjoyed the smell of burning components so uh, almost certainly a power supply problem there. Now repair is complicated uh, first up someone has uh, removed the back plate and replaced fuses and things like that whether they've done anything more who knows and secondly I can't get a service manual so unless the damage is limited to the power supply then uh, this might be uh, an abortive repair and um, that's just because it will become kind of an economically unfeasible for me to dig around trying to fault find all the other circuits um, but first up I'll try and repair the power supply. So the reason I say it's economically unfeasible um, is because I could plow loads and loads of time into this and I would do if I were planning to uh, to keep it because I think it would be worth it but I'm actually planning to uh, to sell this on so um, I want to kind of limit how much money and time uh, I put into this but yeah if I was planning to keep this for my own use then uh, my uh, my judgment on economically feasible would vary. Okay so it's time to uh, take this apart now I'm fast forwarding through this because it took a long time uh, it has to be said this thing is built like a tank and uh, it has hundreds of screws everything that can be screwed together is screwed together with various sizes um, so one of the first things I need to do is to uh, take the back off to gain access I just take the sides and the top off they were straightforward enough um, but the uh, the back is a different matter uh, everything seems to be screwed to everything else and uh, although this is a frame construction you'd expect the back to be held on through the side panels uh, in fact um, it's also screwed to lots of subcomponents which themselves are screwed to uh, other things so quite a struggle to uh, take this apart um, in general terms on take out all the screws in the back um, and then the bracket that holds the uh, the power cable on and everything like that also has to be removed um, and then you can finally gain access through to the transformer section and things like that um, but overall it's pretty hard work uh, just getting in there um, in this case it's not helped the, 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 the corner feet which are actually really just cable wraps uh, have been pushed in to some degree this stops the bottom panel coming out and it also makes it extremely difficult to take the back panel off as well um, because it's kind of distorting out the, the framework and in, I have to actually loosen the big screws that hold the actual corners together being careful not to have them drop out because uh, they are actually the structure of the case and uh, I'm going to be in a mess if they fall apart um, also the top cans and everything like that are held in through the side frames as well so that's all got to come out um, but anyway I eventually get there and we eventually find our way through to the inside um, although it's very very modular all screened boxes just have to move the ones out of the way that I don't need so we're in and uh, in the center I think we've got the regulated power supply um, and uh, yeah everything is still boxed but anyway uh, the right side I think it's just the the power and the uh, amplifiers for the tube um, the right -hand side in the middle here is the regulated power supply I think um, and uh, I think it'll just come out if I undo this bracket and just, just sort of pull it back I think it will lift out uh, as a whole unit there may be some more screws holding it in place that wouldn't come as a surprise at all um, I'm a bit confused with the labeling because for example um, I've got labels going into uh, numbered ports and the label on the cable doesn't correspond 
Um, so I've got a label on here. It doesn't correspond to the label on the box. That's not where it's plugged in. Um, so yeah, this, this is a bit of a so-and-so. Um, not quite sure about that. But anyway, we will just kind of label them up, I think, myself and uh, switch them around. Now in the bottom, we've got what looks like the rectifier board. So some big caps sitting behind the, uh, the low voltage transformer here. That's going down onto the board below. And we've got big caps there. They actually feel okay. Um, it's going to be so and so to get at that though. I can't see an easy way of sliding the transformer out. I mean, there might be a way, but uh, I suspect I have to get in through the bottom in order to uh, to move it. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can get this uh, this regulated section out and go from there. So yeah, it is just the uh, top two little brackets. I just had to move the entire top section out of the way first. But uh, and I've labelled it up and out it's come. And what I've ended up with is a box covered in screws that have to be undone. Yeah, so you can see all the places that I've had to label up just to uh, uh, indicate the uh, the incorrectly labelled positions. So on the box, they're just labelled sequentially. Uh, no, one is hidden around the side, uh, and it's where the rectifier unit goes in. But yeah, two, three, four, five, and then. Uh, uh, they obviously have some sort of cross-reference that enables them to uh, to figure out what goes where. Um, so these are just uh, Phillips screws, um, but there's just so many of them. Every, everything is unbelievably screwed together uh, in this. Anyways, we've got the top off. Uh, just having a quick look around. Uh, yeah, some nice inductors. Uh, all the capacitors actually look pretty good, I think. Um, just having a quick survey around and uh, yeah okay i can kind of see the first problem uh looking right down here i'm going to try and zoom in on this hopefully and uh you can see what i've just found take a look at that so that resistor is just a pile of carbon now uh, and burnt board around it so how bad the board is and the uh, surrounding components, I don't know. Uh, I'm almost certainly going to end up replacing that capacitor that's next to it too. Uh, and I would suspect that it's the big transistor that's right near it that is uh, responsible for that. Uh, if that transistor shorts, essentially, then uh, there's nothing to limit the current going through that resistor. Um, and, and that will be the end of it. That's at least my suspicion. It might have started with the resistor. So anyway, I'm clearly going to need uh, a lot more access uh, to this board. Uh, in fact, I'll have just have to take all the aluminium off ultimately. But uh, let's just get into the back, see what's uh, going on there and uh, see if we can see any more on the board at all, any more signs of damage. So we're into the bottom now, just switch camera and uh, over the way. Yeah, well, we can see an interesting little bodge, but also around this transistor, that's pretty blackened. It doesn't look too healthy at all. Um, what else we got? Uh, some more blackening down here. And uh, yeah, so there's definitely a few components around here that are showing some, uh, some signs of uh, distress now. In truth, this is a power supply. You kind of do expect it to get pretty hot um, in certain places. So it's not the end of the world, but yeah, I will certainly have to have a good look at a lot of these transistors, I think. And in particular, that one there that looks very blackened. Okay, so I've got the surround out. I can see a lot better now. So there's another burnt resistor down this end. Um, again, I'll try and just zoom in on that. There we go. So yeah. I um, don't know if that would be a similar value. It's a bit concerning that we're at the other end because that would indicate that I have multiple power rail failures. Um, I will look up and see if I can find a circuit diagram for this part number, the 322U9478. Um, everything else looks all right. It's just these resistors, but you have to suspect all the transistors near them and uh, and also some of the other semiconductors so i'm just going to be pulling off a lot of transistors diodes and things like that and doing a lot of tests i think okay so i'm just going through and documenting all the transistors etc etc that i can see uh, and just surveying it much more closely so i've jotted down all the transistor numbers and uh, that i can get at, at least and uh, also the ic's 
um, and things like that. Um, and uh, unfortunately, although I can see part of the resistor on the left, the one on the right is, is so badly burnt that there's just not a chance. Um, so this one begins with six, but other than that, it's hard to see. So I've got to suspect that uh, Q42 right next to it. And uh, interestingly, there are essentially two sets of uh, components on this board. Um, uh, well, perhaps you could say three. There's, there's there's two lots of three which are the same, and then sorry, sorry, two lots of two on either end which are the same. There are then two in the middle which are the same as each other, and then um, then there's a little regulator I think on the left hand side as well. But uh, yeah, this right hand resistor is the troublesome one. Uh, I'm going to need to think about how to uh, work out what that value might be. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to do some tests, I think, uh, actually heating some resistors. So I'll pull it out, I'll measure its value, and then I'll do some tests and heat some resistors and see if I can't actually work out roughly what that is. So I've kind of gone ahead and ordered some of the transistors because uh, I just I just know that I'm going to need them, really. And I had to order a new old part um, and, uh, for a lot of the big transistors. So I've got most of the ones that go across the front couple of them I haven't got but most of them I have and also the big power transistors on the back plate as well um, a lot of the little ones I think I can uh, replace with uh, generics that I've got in the cupboard um, but this guy certainly is going to come out and uh, I'll compare it with its counterpart and I'll compare it with its new version and uh, we'll just see what we see I think so fingers crossed Well, that came out okay good okay transistors connected up to the transistor tester let's have a little look so uh yeah press the test button here we go waiting waiting yeah, new result and no component so uh, yeah that is definitely uh gone ski um so in what way i'm not really sure uh, often it just shows short so um yeah but anyway it's failing to detect a component at all okay so let's uh, grab one of the new ones and uh connect this up and we'll just see what happens um so hopefully we've got a, yeah, a much better result from this one are these the darlingtons i, I think these are darlingtons um but i'm not expecting a high gain because that you know the first transistor is just there to drive the high power second transistor not to make it hugely gainful at least not at the um test current and voltage that we're going to be using here here we go yep we've got an npn darlington and uh yeah hv isn't very high 21 at 5 milliamps that's all but uh, anyway there we go uh it is correctly identifying the uh the darlington that we've plugged in from the new old stock bag so uh, so yep so one transistor down though looking at the board not sure i've got that middle one come out thank you Okay, so this one is just a straight BJT, I think. Um, we'll get it connected up and test it, see what we think of this one. So I, I do suspect this one will be will be gone as well, but uh, we'll see. I'm just making sure I get good contact onto the solder section because the, the leads are a bit mucky. So, okay, here we go. And we'll test, and there we go. Oh, two diodes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, all, all those transistors, you know, when you're testing with a multimeter, should show up as two diodes. Um, the tester, of course, tests the base behavior, so we shouldn't see two diodes here. So, let's again compare that with the new one and just see how that is. Okay. So, I'm not going to bother um, showing you me connecting it up. And uh, here it is. Here is what it's supposed to look like. I've plugged in the new old stock, and uh, yeah, it's absolutely fine. So, uh, so yeah, another another one for the waste bin. So, uh, just for information, I am also just looking these up the uh, data sheets just to make sure that the um, uh, the the device that I've identified uh, 
is what it should be, that it looks right physically, that uh, it has the appropriate functionality, that uh, in this case, we're talking about 100 uh, uh, DC -D convert, DC converter, high frequency power amplifier applications, high high speed switching, etc., etc. So all of that makes sense, the power dissipation, the package uh, and everything. So I know I'm looking at the right thing. And uh, I also can look at things like the HFE and uh, against my measurement and make sure that everything is uh, is appropriate and that the new one that I'm fitting in um, actually is what it says it is as well, uh, at least as far as I can. There we go. Oh yeah, look at it go. Oh, in fact, there we go, uh, all off, thank you. Yeah, I think we've uh, whew, demonstrated the, uh, the point there. Great, okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, let's measure them again. So as you can see, I'm conducting my resistor tests, uh, setting fire to them, burning them, getting them hot, etc, 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 for a variety of values around what I measured the uh, actual charred ones off the, off the board. Now I'm not going to put the whole video here, I've done a separate video where I show how I did these tests, the measurements that I made, and uh, there's a table at the end. In short, however, um, if they're just heated um, but don't catch fire, then generally speaking their values are dropping and I suspect that's because the epoxy casing is uh, becoming conductive and you've essentially got parallel resistance. If they catch fire and the epoxy case essentially drops off then they tend to go up in value and I suspect that's because things like the metal film or the metal film resistor are getting uh, gaps in it uh, where oxides are forming and, uh, and actually that's uh, reducing the conduction area. So um, in this case, I decided on a 680 ohm and a 1.8K as the replacement values. Anyway, the link's up above. Go and watch that video. It's a bit of fun. All right, I give in. So in the end, I've kind of caved uh, and decided just to take every single transistor off this board and, uh, and also the big power diodes as well. Uh, and I'm going to test them properly. And uh, then I'm also going to test all the little uh, smaller diodes on the board just with uh, you know, just with my meter while all the big uh, transistors are out. And hopefully that will be a good test. Uh, I did find two small transistors where the tops had literally blown off them. So um, so, so lit literally the uh, epoxy case uh, had split in two and the top had come off and you could actually see the interior. Uh, metal connections so obviously uh, I didn't need to test those but anyway um, I'll just test them all and uh, we'll just find out uh, everything that needs to be replaced hope these two middle two green transistors don't need replacing because uh, I can't find cost-effective replacements for those about $12 each um, so fingers crossed um, I won't need to do that um, but what I have done is uh, I have looked up the data for every single active part on this board. I've eventually tracked them down. They weren't very easy. And um, yeah, and so I can uh, I can find equivalents for pretty much everything. Uh, all the small transistors are easily replaceable with stuff like BC 640s. Um, you can't get a 640 anymore. You get a 640T. Um, that would work as well. Um, and a couple of other transistors that I've, that I've got kicking around. So um, it's just the big ones. Um, now I don't keep large transistors in stock and if I do buy them I don't buy extra stock because they're just they're just too expensive I can't afford you know uh, five dollars a piece five pounds a piece for a big transistor to just sit in the drawer for the next 20 years just in case I might need it um, so anyway um, long short of it I found a lot of faulty parts okay so I put the back heatsink panel on so that I can position all of these correctly and uh, yeah, I just kind of applying a little bit of heat sink paste to those that, and uh, obviously the washer to those that need it. This one has a metal back. There you go.
I think. Okay, yep, fine. I'll clean the flux off when I've completely finished soldering. So these are the newer transistors have got slightly smaller pins, so they've gone in very easily, but it uh, means I've got a bit of work to do to fill the uh, through hole. I do want to fill the through hole because I don't know what state the uh, I don't know what state the through hole plating is in, so I do just want to fill the hole up very softly. Make sure we've got solder going right through to the other side of the board properly. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that's the back section done. Should put a little bit of uh, gunge on these before I put it back in, I think, just to keep them steady. And uh, I'm just going to feed in uh, a cable clip for this guy just before uh, I move on to the next section forward. Tight, but uh, that's good. Just pay some attention to the detail there. He's got his insulating pads below him, that's fine. I'll deal with putting these back on in a minute or two. Actually, you know what, I won't, I'll do them next. Uh, so first up I need to find some more of these screws because uh, this one in particular was completely destroyed as it uh, as it came out. Uh, this one's alright. This one's alright. So these are in two halves. One half just passes straight through, the other does not. So uh, let's pop this in. Job one, job two is to get this to go through an insulating fibre insulator. Job three is to get the one of the ones with the screw thread. And pray we can get the damn thing to screw on because it was a real pain to take them off, to be honest. It didn't help the batteries just run out. So these were a real pain in the neck and it ended up damaging the heads of the screws as I took them out. I think the plastic had got really, really stiff and resistive. So I put some new Torx head screws in there, cleaned out the holes, cleaned out some threads and things like that, just to make sure it all went in a lot easier. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of tidy up the board now a little bit and wipe off some of the rubbish and uh, uh, I'll also turn over and do the flux as far as I've gone so far before I put the next uh, section of aluminium in and uh, repeat for the next uh, block of transistors. Okay so on here there are two transistors that I removed because the tops had come off and they were 2SC2720s, it's a VCB 60 volts, 0.5 amps, 600 milliwatts and I'm going to replace these with a, because I've got them, with a P2N2222A, which is basically the same device, except instead of a midi-base collector, we've got collector-base emitter. 
Um, so I just need to be a bit cautious putting these in. And I'm going to just double check my pin out is correct. At least I don't have to kind of contort the legs to get them to uh, line up with the holes. Just put it in backwards, I think. Yeah, red collector, HFE 220, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, it's a red collector. Fortunately, these are marked on the board. Collector. So yeah, as I say, exactly the opposite way around to, uh, to what they were. So these two capacitors are right next to an absolutely red hot component, so I'm dumping them. And I've actually got a couple of slightly higher spec here, 33 microfarad, uh, 50 volt, 105 centigrade uh, from Worth Electronics, so they're quite nice. Okay, so uh, this is essentially reassembled We've got new transistors, four new transistors on here, three new transistors on the back, two more transistors in here, replacements, and uh, all of the remaining transistors have been tested, all of the diodes have been tested. Two new capacitors on here because I was afraid they might be heat damaged, and we are just missing the two resistors. So I'm now going to get the main body and see if I can work out how to sort of reassemble this but still give me some access uh, and then I can actually test it. Okay, so I've got the main chassis out. Um, quite a lot of it is still disconnected. There's a whole stack of cables back here which would normally go into the power supply so nearly every circuit has not got power. Uh, and I've connected on the back of this we go from the transformer to a rectifier board and then that comes up to here. So uh, I've connected the rectifier board to this so it has a voltage input. So as I can tell, these are all voltage outputs. I'm slightly worried about this one. I have a whole book feeling it might be a, like a voltage feedback, but anyway, we shall see. The left hand pin on each one of these is ground uh, and uh, that is connected to this guy here. Um, in this plastic bag here is the fuse board and it's got lots of exposed fuses so I didn't want to go uh, uh, touching any of that. I'm not so worried about this piece down here because this is all insulated, even the switch is insulated. And I've switched the switch on, I've got my cable running in and I'm going to turn that on at the mains switch in a second. So I've replaced most of the active, well all the active components that I believe are faulty. And here on the end of this wire are that is my 680 ohm 2.4 watt resistor array and this is my 1K8 2.4 watt resistor array. So fingers crossed, they won't smoke. So, 3, 2, 1. And uh, so far, I don't see any smoke is kind of nice really. Let's, <laughs> let's get my cables the right way around. Let's so still just leaving that for a second or two just to make sure whether it does anything interesting. And uh, yeah nothing interesting appears to be happening so that's good. We don't like interesting things when we're testing power supplies. So I'm going to just plug him in here just to uh, just to ground him. And then we'll measure our voltages across this connector here, which should be zero. I think this one is zero as well. That's minus five, so that's quite nice. Minus 0 0.6, I have no idea what that is. So those two are a bit confusing. Maybe they're return paths. That's definitely minus 5.1, so that's quite nice. 
Let's see what we've got on this guy here. I suppose for me, the difficulty, the great difficulty for me is that not really knowing what these output voltages are supposed to be, it is quite difficult to test. So I think I'm pretty happy with the minus five. I'm expecting to see a minus five. Uh, I'm also expecting to see a five though. Absolutely expecting to see a five and that's not there. Uh, I've got a 12 over there. So I kind of expect to see that because I can kind of see the uh, uh, 12 volt regulator and it's trimmer next to it. So, um, so that sort of makes sense. I wasn't really just expecting a string of minus fives. I was thinking five minus five, put and either then twelve plus minus twelve or plus minus fifteen, and uh, I don't have any of that. Okay, with a bit of effort, I managed to squeeze this out from underneath the uh, tube. Uh, and as I said, this is principally a rectifier board. So as far as I can see, this is a bridge rectifier, this is a bridge rectifier, and so is this one. These three leads here appear to bugger off too. I'm pretty sure they go to the front panel power switch. Yeah. So we'll just make sure that's plugged in. And in actual fact, we'll just take a double check on that and make sure that they do work, I think, as well. But. Uh, So that was a good start. Right, let's have a little look then. So we've got our inputs coming in from the transformer over here. Oh, and we've got some nice burning on the back and we've got an open circuit just here, I think. I wasn't sure on that. So that burning is actually on the track from there to there. And there's a little bit around here, and I would say there's a couple of dry joints there. Possibly that one, certainly. So these are running into a bridge rectifier. So one kind of wonders whether or not really what we're looking at is the result of overheating of these bridge rectifiers because of the overheating. And look for the circuit. This bridge rectifier looks in better condition. Let's see if we can work out the uh, the flow. And we've got some pretty bad looking connections around here on these resistors. That's so strange, they look all right. Yeah, feels all right. These are uh, Nippon Chemicons. It's at 3,363 volts. This is a What's this front one? Can't read it. Is there somewhere? 4,763 volts. And this is the 4,700. Uh, so this is 2 watt 0.5 ohm, 2 watt something. Point five one, point five one. Do we assume this one's 0.51? I'm going to say we don't, and the reason is that the code number at the bottom is different. Let's see if we can measure it. Oh, come on, give me a break. Okay. Yeah, 0 0.054, that's fine. Let's try this guy. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know what this guy's supposed to be, but not much I would think. One, yeah, that sounds all right. So, and this one is a 0.33. Oh, yeah. So all this stuff, oh, there's another one down here. Fifteen meg. He's knacked. Oh, in fact, I can actually physically see the crack right through this resistor. 
So I'm not sure I can quite zoom in on that for you, but uh, I'll give it a go, why not? Zoom in. Yep, so here we go. So yeah, right through the centre of this resistor, there's a big crack. So um, that's a 0.33 ohm. These all resistors were okay. Uh, now I need to look at this. These two are bridge rectifiers. I have no idea what their current capacity is. Clearly they've got a nice big heat sink attached. And this guy down here is a bridge rectifier as well, of course. Plus minus, plus minus. Yeah, the capacitors look all right. It's pretty flat. I wonder if there's a tiny bit of curvature on that one. I really hope not, because that is going to be very expensive to replace. But, uh, yeah, visitors checked out okay. These check out okay. So 0.33 to watt ceramic. Oh dear, no, they're not in there anymore. What have we done with them? I'll put them in a new location when they run out of space up there. <laughs> I just can't remember where the new location is. Anyway, um, let me order one then in that case. So these are one ohm, uh, one watts. I'm going to put three of them together in parallel. Which roughly speaking will then give me 0 0.3 at well since they're clustered together it'll be a little bit less than uh, 3 watts but uh, new enough and we'll cut this guy here Oops, there we go. Yeah, this is a wire wound job. And we'll just see if we can persuade this guy to uh, solder on. Okay, I think that's soldered in place, all of that lot. So uh, let's remove this connector here so I can easily get at the pins. Got the back's on, got the front is on, power's on. Let's see what we've got going on. What is happening? So what do we assume is naught volts? Gonna kind of connect up to that resistor just here, which because I can get contact on it, and that would appear. Pin one, 50 volts. Pin two, nothing. 33. I think me, why am I come off here? Let me... Fifty. So 50, minus 51, 33. Those are actually the only three major capacitors that I've got on here. Okay, so the resistors, etc., have arrived from DigiKey. Uh, they only took a couple of days, so that's pretty good news. Um, so uh, these are um, three watts for the board, um, instead of what I thought was two watts and four watts for the rectifier uh, board. So uh, one of the first jobs is to take off this uh, nasty little array of resistors down here um, that I put together for testing and pop a proper resistor in there. So that's gonna be a four watt resistor and uh, it's wire round, just like the original. Slightly different casing, but uh, um, this is flash over resistant and fireproof and yeah all of the usual things even if it does burn it gives off safe fumes all that sort of 
stuff and it's the same for the other resistors as well so um, slightly more expensive but i think worth the uh, worth the trouble um so uh, yeah let me get on with that and then i will uh, plug this to together so i have given this a quick test with the uh, repaired rectifier board and uh, this does seem to give appropriate voltages now so uh, yeah it's really just a case of cleaning everything up and uh, doing a bit of soldering and then uh, giving it a proper test so yeah just uh, soldering all the components uh, i'm forming the legs actually so that they uh, stand a little bit proud of the board just so there's a bit of air flow around them and uh, that should help uh, dissipate any heat uh, and then essentially i'm going to pop the uh, uh, rectifier board back down into place loosely screw it into place uh, and then put the other board uh, the other device uh, in its proper place uh, temporarily so that uh, i can actually connect it up properly to uh, all the other components and, uh, and run the test it'll just take a minute to to do that unfortunately obviously i'm just cleaning the board down as well with a bit of uh, alcohol and uh, anti-static brush just to uh, get in rid of any uh, leftover rubbish okay the rectifier board is back in place and uh, yeah, so now I just need to uh, reassemble the uh, framework on this. He sits in uh, like that, as far as I recall. So somewhere there must be a top and bottom set of framework pieces to uh, to go onto it. That's all the way through and into the heatsink right through the board. Yeah, that's good. Sits out of the way. And this is how I remember it. J9. J9. Did I change numbers at home? J61. J37. J55. Empty. Okay, now I'm just double checking over absolutely everything to make sure I have no leftovers. This guy back in here temporarily. Unfortunately, a lot of my labels have fallen off. <laughs> This is not what we need. There's literally only one place for this guy to go, so that's easy, at least. So this guy has to be B. I knew there was one. Bloody well knew it. Can I get in there just to squeeze him in? that way it must be that way okay j35 fortunately is at this end there we have him he's in Ooh. all right everything is connected just need to make sure that all the main stuff is uh, safe when i maneuver it Let's try to find some muscles and turn it round and pray we don't get lots of smoke pouring out the back of it. Ow. Ow. Well, okay, let's turn this guy off. Sure. And he can suck air through there, I think. That'll do. I have a very nasty feeling. Anyway, here we go. Okay, we've got a standby light. Just going to drop the lighting a little bit, so hopefully the contrast will be better. We can see if I do that like that. 
Yeah, I think the uh, the camera's got a bit noisier, but I think it'd be better like that. We can actually just see the lights slightly better. Oh, not bad. We started, we failed. So we literally just got to the point where we started getting a trace and then it bombed out. Unfortunately, some idiot had his head in the way, so uh, you couldn't see on the video that a little bit of trace just appeared at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, and then the fuse on the back actually blew, or one of the fuses. Um, the good news is, of course, the power supply itself didn't get damaged. It just literally blew the fuse. And um, the standby is still working. Everything's fine, except the uh, fuse has blown. So that would indicate that we've got a power problem uh, elsewhere, or we've got a power draw problem elsewhere. But unfortunately, it also means that that isn't happening straight away. So it's going to be tri quite tricky to track down. And the problem for me now really is whether to continue. So I think I'll continue a little bit in another video just to see if I can track down the offending module, what, what's drawing that extra current and uh, at what phase in its startup does that happen? Because it was okay for about 30 seconds and then it bombed out. Now I didn't see any lights coming on, but my suspicion is it's going through various switch on stages. So I have to keep all the modules in or most of the modules in at least. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to go through those different startup stages and get to the proper self test. So I kind of really need to measure the current on about 10 or 15 different supply lines simultaneously. I only have to measure on whatever voltage the fuse blew for. But um, yeah, that's not really very good news at all. I don't really have sufficient tools to do that simultaneous measurement. So um, I'll think about actually doing a little project where I make some uh, current clamps um, or some sort of various types of current sensor that I can uh, pop into this circuit to uh, to just look at the loading across all the different modules um, while they're still all connected up. I think that's probably the best I can do. I'm still not particularly confident that that's going to lead to a solution. I still think there may be too many problems buried in the circuitry of this device uh, to make it cost effective for me. Um, but anyway, I think that's the end of the power supply repair. We've got the power supply working. We've got all the voltage rails we expected. Um, we've still just got a bit of a problem um, in that despite the fact the voltage is there, we're still going over current and blowing a fuse. So um, anyway, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, if you haven't already done so, go ahead, subscribe and leave comments down below. And I'll see you next time, probably looking at some current clamp experiments. And uh, of course, if you haven't done so already, go and have a look at the resistor um, setting fire video. And uh, yeah, leave comments down below. See you next time. Take care.